David Cronenberg's Shivers was released in 1975 and has a very interesting history. Unlike some of Cronenberg's previous films like Stereo and Crimes of the Future, Shivers is a mainstream commercial film that targets a specific audience, namely an audience interested in sex and violence. But the same themes are there as in these older films, namely the idea of disease um, that creates mutation or destroys out of some sense of will, while at the same time not being merely destructive but actually liberating its victims in some essential sense. And that becomes very, very clear in Shivers. So how did Shivers come about? Well, Cronenberg started writing the script in 1972 after spending some time in France, where he experimented with the medium of the novel, made some documentaries for the CBC, and even tried his hands at sculpting. He apparently made a piece called Surgical Instrument for Operating on Mutants, which is an idea that will later surface in the form of the Surgical Instruments for Operating on Mutant Women in uh, Dead Ringers. Now, Cronenberg says that the idea for the story of Shivers came from a dream in which a spider emerged from a woman's mouth as she slept. But there was the sense in this dream that the spider also gave her life during the day as it lurked within, and maybe there was something liberating about that daytime uh, inhabitants. So even in the origins of the story of Shivers, we have one of Cronenberg's central themes, namely that the disease that it's a disease that comes with benefits, and you can see my video on a dangerous method to learn about how even in a film released in 2011 slash 2012, Cronenberg is still pursuing this theme of the disease with benefits, in that case, psychological diseases um, having huge payoff. Now, I said that Shivers targets a specific audience, and we can track that intention uh, that Cronenberg had in the history of the film's titles uh, to be exploitative. The original draft of the screenplay was called Orgy of the Blood Parasites, which is in keeping with other films of the 1970s. Later, the title that came from within would be used in America, and that is a kind of safer title. It evokes movies from the 1950s, and so maybe the Americans wanted to use that title to sort of soften the blow of what's really going on in, um, in that film. But interestingly, uh, they came from within the poster. If you look it up, it has a tagline which reads, Terror beyond the power of priest or science to exercise. And as a side note, that's a really interesting text because a key subtlety to the genre that we still have in horror movies today is for the story to make us as viewers aware, uh, to make us as viewers aware that neither science or religion can explain the threat. That's one of the really powerful elements that George Romero is working with, particularly in Dawn of the Dead, where there's this huge discussion of how uh, these scientists and experts, they're not able to explain anything. And then later, uh, there's a priest who has a religious explanation that is ultimately insufficient and doesn't really explain anything either. Um, so Cronenberg is sort of tapping into that tension between science and uh, superstitious religious uh, elements and uh, their inability to explain an external threat. Another title that was used for the film was The Parasite Murders, but ultimately the film has, become to be, has come to be known very fondly as Shivers. Now, the film was made with Cinepex, which as a Canadian company devoted to making softcore films essentially means what has been called maple syrup porn. But Cronenberg himself has said that porn is not the right word. He has called the kind of movie that Cinepex was making French-Canadian rock and roll melodrama. Um, apparently Cronenberg got involved with Cinepex when he interviewed to direct a film called Loving and Laughing, uh, which is very uh, kind of uh, amusing to think of him making a movie called Loving and Laughing. But apparently he even, in part of his audition to be a director, directed uh, a short scene of that movie uh, with, uh, and a scene with dialogue. Needless to say, he didn't get the job, but he did get the interest of the company who helped to arrange for funding from the Canadian Film Development Corporation, or the CDFC. But it took three years to get that funding, and during that time Cronenberg went to LA, contacted Roger Corman's New World Pictures, and tried to get uh, private funding. Um, one of the things that Cronenberg liked about Corman's business was that it was a business. These were people who wanted to do business uh, in the film industry. Unlike the Canadian government, which liked to delay projects, had a lot of people scratching their chins, thinking, committees that take years and years and years to make decisions about what they're going to fund. Uh, 
that was, you know, not ideal for someone who wanted to get out there and make films. But as it happened on the day that Cronenberg visited Corman, Corman was out getting a root canal, so not much came out of that endeavor. In any case, working with Corn uh, Corman might not have entirely followed the model of Cronenberg's dream, because Cronenberg, as he has said, um, really wanted to belong to the first generation of Canadians who could actually make films at home. So, eventually the CDFC did fund the film, contributing about $76,000 to a total budget of $179,000. Um, and the best part of the whole deal is that Cronenberg was appointed the role of director, which didn't necessarily have to happen. Um, but to give the production some protection from being potentially ruined by a young filmmaker who had previously only had uh, a certain amount of success with shorter art house films, Cronenberg was very purposely surrounded by experienced people, one of whom was Ivan Reitman, who later went on to great success in the US, and he served as line producer on Shivers. Most of the actors were cast locally, but there were some faces uh, genre fans would recognize, such as Barbara Steele and Lynn Lowry, who had recently starred in George Romero's The Crazies. Now, the primary production for Shivers took place in an apartment complex on Nuns Island in Montreal, and I highly recommend some of the amusing anecdotes you can read about the production of Shivers in a, Cronen a book called Cronenberg on Cronenberg, and it includes one funny, uh, well, I don't know if it's funny or not, but one uh, story in which Cronenberg was asked to slap one of his actresses in order to help her achieve the desired performance. She herself actually asked for him to do this. And there's another scenario in which uh, Lynn Lowry stabbed Cronenberg in the shoulder with a fork because he was serving as as a victim and he had a blood pack there, but she missed and uh, damaged his actual skin. 